It was in this room that Ronnie and I came after his first inaugural. And it was in this room that we found, we, we were told, that the prisoners had been released and they were in Iranian airspace and everything was going to be all right. Nancy Reagan in 2002 talking about the Iranian hostages. Joining us now, Craig Shirley and Andrew Oak. Craig is an author and historian. He wrote three bestsellers about President Reagan. Andrew Oak here is one of the producers in, of the highly acclaimed C-SPAN series, First Ladies, Influence and Image. He also wrote a companion book to the series to be released this spring. Thank you both for being here. Craig, first to you. We've been talking a lot about the influence of Nancy Reagan on President Reagan and his administration. Can you put us in context in that regard? Yeah, uh, she, uh, he went out of his way to point out, uh, by the way, this is a very sad day, Brett. Um, uh, he, in 1980, uh, the issue came up of what type of role she would have because Rosalind Carter had been attending Reagan, or, uh, uh, Carter cabinet meetings, um, and uh, he said she wouldn't be attending uh, cabinet meetings, and they said, well, what cause would she have? And he said, mostly me. Um, and he meant that because they were uh, utterly, completely in love. There was a, a marriage for the uh, ages. It was made White House history. It ranks with the Washingtons and, and the uh, Adams. Uh, but uh, and she did later have causes, uh, just say no, of course, and before Vietnam POWs and other things like that. But they were utterly, completely devoted to each other. They were really best friends, and they could be very, very happy, just the two of them, you know, horseback riding or canoeing or at the, uh, at the ranch. Andy, you've uh, studied the First Ladies. Unique stories about this First Lady? Yeah, absolutely. You know, in my travels going around to all the historical locations, libraries and museums and things for, for every First Lady, one of the unique ones about Nancy was when I got to, to the Reagan Library in Simi, California in 2013, Nancy had just handed over a little white box, handed personally over to the curator there, and in the box were three keys. They're very significant keys. They were gold keys with jewels on them at a Beverly Hills jeweler, probably Rodeo Drive, something pretty fancy, as Ronnie didn't, didn't spare any expense when it came to, to Nancy, Mrs. Reagan. And the first key was the first key to her first dressing room. I believe it was to MGM when she got her first dressing room with the name on the door. And he had tragedy and comedy keys with jewels for the eyes and made for her, for her dressing room. And later when they would buy their first house together, Nancy returned the favor by getting two keys in the shapes of little houses and the windows were jeweled and in her handwriting on his key it said our first and it was just these little personal things that really pulled these ladies especially the, the, the older ones but with Nancy and, and, and Ronnie that the letters that they wrote the letters that they had when they were separated when when uh, by, by distance by travel for instance when when Mr. Reagan was president of the Screen Actors Guild and, and later governor and president, you know, whenever they weren't spending time together, he would sit at dinners by himself or in his hotel room and write about his activities of the day as if he was having a conversation with her. So there was this real connection even when they were apart. It's just, it's really like, like we were just hearing there that, that it's, it's, a love, it's a love relationship, a marriage for the ages. Yeah. Craig. Uh, you studied at the Reagan White House yes. and how integral she was in there. Obviously, she was trying to protect her husband, uh, but she she had some personnel decisions that she was a part of. She was a, a part of that White House. Well, there there were rumors at the time in '87 that she was uh, had a hand in uh, Don Reagan's uh, ouster. Whether or not that has actually happened is. Is, is something you know that is uh, only speculated on. She didn't get involved too much in, in West Wing activities. When she did, you know, she said, she said, look, I sleep, I sleep with the president, so I'm going to, you know, use uh, my influence uh, when I can. But it was not, wasn't on, on nuclear policy or tax policy or budgetary things. It was uh, sometimes a little bit on personnel, but really it was more just about uh, about him himself. I remember. Um, uh, during the uh, 80 campaign, or no, I guess it was uh, 83 or 84, it was several years after the assassination attempt, he was wearing um, the, uh, a purple, a, a famous uh, purple plaid suit that he loved, and she hated it. She just despised it. And she used to, every time he'd wear it, she used to give him grief about it. And they were on Air Force One one day, and, uh, and uh, the president was getting ready to put on the suit because he used to put on sweatpants when he was on Air Force One to keep the uh, crease in his pants. And he's putting on the suit, and she started you know, nagging him about the suit, and and uh, he said, I like it, I like it, I want to wear it, and uh, she finally turned to Mike Deaver and says, 
Mike, tell the president what the staff says about his suit. And he turns to looks at Deaver and says, Mike, what does the staff say about my suit? And Deaver says, Mr. President, the staff says if you were going to be shot, why couldn't have been shot wearing that suit? So, <laughs> so uh, she was more, you know, uh, concerned herself more with his uh, with his wardrobe and things like that. You know, part, you know, speeches a little bit, things like that. But mostly, she confined herself to East uh, Wing activities. Well, Andy and Craig, thank you very much for being here. And some reflections of First Lady Nancy Reagan died at the age of 94.